we're going to have a look at how to get from an intern to a pro by avoiding these simple bad practices that everybody does in Excel. Let's see how. Hi guys, I'm Samina. Today I'm going to share with you some of the newer features in Excel that have taken over some of the legacy features which we are all used in the past. So we have better ways to do things. Why not learn these and help improve our productivity? Let's get into it. So the first one that we have is the Merge and Center. So if we have a title on a table over here, what we used to do is select the title and let's say we want to have the title go across here. We would just go across to Merge and Center, which can also be um, from the formatting table here. You can go to Alignment and do Merge Cells. Now, this can allow the title to come into the middle and achieve exactly what you want. What this prevents is things like if you want to have, if you want to select your column, if you press control and spacebar, then what it does, it tends to select all of the data where the cells are centered. A better way to do this is a feature. So we just do control Z is a feature called align and center. So we highlight the cells from where we want the title, control one to open up the formatting, dialog box and we go across to alignment, go to horizontal, come down to center across selection. So what that's essentially going to do is give you the same type of look as a merge and center, but effectively if you click into this box here, you don't see anything here. If you go back to B2, you'll see the actual data still sits in B2. Now, if you wanna select any row, you can press control and shift and it will select the row. This also prevents things like you might have issues with formulas and functions that you want to sit in certain cells and this will prevent any mismatch on that as well. The second one that I want to share with you is wrap or shrink text. So you have a table like this where you have some of the references here that are the same size and then you have one which is what we would call an outlier a little bit longer than the other. Now you could do different things. You could adjust the columns here and it becomes a little bit smaller. Um, and the way that we get this to happen is we go across, press control one, and we go to a function called shrink to fit. So what this does is if you reduce the column width, then it becomes a little bit smaller without actually changing the font. The other way that you could do it if you really wanted to do is you could wrap the text. If you wrap the text, then it goes across two lines, which is not ideal. So the old way of doing that was you go across here and you change the actual size of the font, which makes it smaller. But if you adjust the columns here, it still remains small. Not the way to do it. Use the shrink to fit or the wrap text function from now on. Another cool feature, another feature that we have now in Excel is when we want to copy across tabs. So we, if we right click here in the old days, what we used to do is move or copy. Now we can just click into the section that we want our tab to go, press create copy, and there you have it. You have another tab over here that you've copied. But now what you need to do is you just go onto the tab, press control, hold onto the left click of the mouse and drag it across. And you see this little plus here, you just drop it down and you find that you have another copy of the tab very easily. The fourth one is unhiding tabs. So once again, what we would do is we would right click and unhide tabs. And previously we were not able to select more than one. Now what you can do is select one, you can select um, the top one and the bottom one by holding control, or you could select the top one, press the shift button, go to the last tab in the range and it will select everything in between, press okay, and you have it here on the right, you have all the tabs that are now unhidden. So the fifth one we have is the auto sum. So we all know how to do the auto sum, press the auto sum, press OK and this is the old way that we would do this. We would press OK here and auto sum, drag this all the way across. So nothing wrong with that, just an older way to do it. Newer way to do it is we just 
Control Z to remove all the totals. If we now go and highlight all of the cells where we want the sums to come up to and press Control and then highlight any other table or data set, press Alt and equals, and there you go. We already have all the data totaled up in next to no time. So the next one is where we want to have data from a table inserted into an Excel sheet, but it's not in an Excel format, it's an image. So if you click onto that, we have a JPEG image here. Now we could do something smart, we could go across and we could just screen clip it perhaps, let's say, and now we go across to our Excel sheet, paste it in here, and now we can start to look at the data, type it in. No, stop, this is the wrong way to do it. I'll show you a very cool way of how to do this better. So a better way to do this is to insert the data from an image. And how we do that is go across to the data tab and then go to from picture, go picture from file, then you get your JPEG image, the location, open that up. Now, if we look on the right hand side over here, you find the data is being analyzed. And what Excel does is try to see if the data makes sense. And if it doesn't, it tries to alert you. So what we can do is review this and it says country, yep, yeah, that looks good. But here it's showing QI instead of Q1. So we can change that to Q1, press accept. And Italy, probably the I and the L look similar to it. So it just wants to confirm with us. Press accept and close, insert the data. It mentions here that you are responsible for validating the accuracy of the data. Insert the data and there you have it. You have the data completely there for you. Another way to take the data is from an online site. So you have a table, you go across to any link. We want to take the population for, let's say, the top three countries. What we do is we do a screen clipping. So hold down the shift and the Windows button and press S and then select the area that you want. Let's just select these three lines here, three countries, press OK. Now we've already got it across in our clipboard. Once we go back to Excel, you can go across to data, insert from picture, and now it has the option picture from clipboard. Press OK, starts to analyze your data here. And once again, it's asking you to review it. So yeah, it looks like a very big number, but that's fine by us, press accept goes across to the date, that's fine. Now, when we have China, it doesn't recognize the flag there, so we can remove that, press accept, and that's okay there, we press accept. And now, just for consistency, let's remove that, press accept, and now everything is according to the chart. Okay, press accept, and we insert the data. Now, once again, responsible for the data, and as you see, you have some slight um, data that you could actually clean up so let's move across that let's delete this and we could once again just delete the two columns here and have the data once again next to us here now what we noticed was there was a percentage here so we could just change that to percentage and it drags over the data and this is a date so we can once again go across here and go to the short date format and it brings in all of our data for us and the last one that I have for you is formatting. So imagine that you have a table over here. What you want to do is you want to format it in your own style colors, and you want to change the data to back to basic data. So what we can do is highlight that. We can go across, change the formats on the back here, change the font, press the B, and now we have it. Yep, that also works, but there's a much better and easier way to do this. So what we do, let's just control Z back, to the normal table we will highlight the table here press ctrl c now we go across and instead of pressing ctrl v where it would just copy the data we press ctrl shift and v and that puts your data right back into a generic format that's it for today i hope that you've learned a trick or two and i hope that it's going to save you a lot of time from now on see you in the next video